Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to scrape this earnings calendar from Yahoo Finance. So within the script, you'll be able to set the date range and the function will be able to scrape all the tables within that date range. And I created a secondary function where all you need to pass in is a symbol and it'll get you all the historical earnings per share data, the estimates and the surprise percentage, which if you go to Yahoo Finance and just enter a ticker here, It'll essentially be this table, which contains all the information you see in this table. So let's go through our script. All right, so here's some of the packages we're going to require. For our first function, the parameters are from and to, which should be the date range you want to scrape the earnings calendar. So let's open up this function. We start off by creating a sequence of dates, and this will return a vector of all the dates within that date range. Now we need to isolate the trading days or business days, and we do that by using our quant libs is business day. So we pass in our calendar, which is the NYC calendar, and our dates vector. Now that we have our trading days only, we're going to use lapply and pass in our trading days as a list. So for each of the trading days, it'll go ahead and create a URL using the from and to days and the actual trading day we want to scrape. We're going to read HTML. Now within that HTML, we need to extract the number of stocks that are reporting that day. Since each of the tables in Yahoo Finance have a limit of 100, we need to determine how many pages we need to scrape. That number gets saved in this variable called n. And in the following line, we locate the table and convert it as a data frame. That'll get saved into this variable called df. So now if there's more than one page, we need to do the following. And we start off by using this if block. For each of the pages, we need to modify the URL. And we do so by adding this offset 100 and size of 100. So now that we have our modified URL, we're going to read HTML and extract the table on the second page. And if there's a third page, if n is greater than 200, that means that there's a third page. So you kind of see the pattern here. We need to modify our URL. And the offset will be 200 and size of 100. I tried modifying the size to something greater than 100, but it didn't seem to work. If there's additional pages that you need to scrape, you would keep adding these blocks. So we follow the same convention where we modify the URL, read the HTML, locate the table and return it as a data frame. Now, depending on the number of pages that we scraped, we need to put everything together. If there's more than one page, we need to row bind our results and save it into this variable called all. Otherwise, if there's only one page, we're gonna assign our first page into all. Now that we have our table, we need to insert our earnings release date. So we're going to add an additional column and just pass in the date or the trading date for the earnings release. And after that gets assigned, just return that data frame. So it'll just keep looping until all the trading days are exhausted, which should return a list for all the earnings dates. And it'll get saved into this variable called all. So let's minimize that. So now that we have that list, we need to row bind all the trading days or earnings release dates. And we do so by using our bind list and converting it as a data frame. We need to fix our earnings per share and our earnings surprise by converting them into numeric variables. And after that gets fixed, just return that data frame. So let's go ahead and test this function. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this function and run it. I'm going to assign my from and to dates and test that function. All right, so let's take a look at calendar. So just as we saw on Yahoo Finance, we have the symbol, the company name, the earnings per share estimate, the actual EPS, the surprise percentage, and the report date. Now for some of these, you may notice that we don't actually get an earnings time or date, which is why I added the report date for a column, and TAS means transfer agent system, but that's just the format that they have it on the page, so there's nothing we could do about this formatting. The earnings per share data and the surprise percentage are all formatted as numeric, in case you want to make some calculations. All right, so let's continue on with our script. So depending on the date range that you choose, it may take a while to run. And that's just because we're pausing within each call just to avoid our IP getting blocked. So I went ahead and scraped the whole month of April. So I'm going to go ahead and read that in as we will need it later on the script. All right, our next function is called get EPS. And all you need to pass in is a ticker and it'll get you the historical earnings per share data along with the earnings releases. So if we open up this function, again, we see a system sleep for three seconds. 
We need to construct our URL by passing in the ticker. We're going to read the HTML, locate the table, extract the very first instance of the table, transpose it and convert it as data frame. And then I modify the earnings date. And after I remove the time zone, I go ahead and format the timestamp by using as POSIX CT. So that'll convert it into an appropriate timestamp for the earnings per share and the surprise percentage. These will get converted to as numeric columns. And after we fix that, we're going to go ahead and return the table. So let's go ahead and minimize this function and run it. We're going to go ahead and test it by running the following line. And if we take a look at that table, all right, so for this ticker, we have a total of 69 entries. We see that the earnings date column got fixed and the earnings per share and the surprise percentage are all as numeric in case you wanted to make some calculations. And we do see some future instances of earnings release dates, but I believe these are estimates. All right, so everything looks correct. So let's continue on with our script. All right, so the next block is optional. For this part, I'm just gonna grab the constituents for the S&P 500 ETF and see how many of the tickers that are reporting this month or have reported belong to the S&P. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the weights just in case we wanna do some analysis later on. So I'm not gonna go over this function called get constituents as I did a video on how this function works. So I'll go ahead and recommend that video at the end of this tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. I'm gonna get the SPY constituents. I'm gonna extract the symbols. So I'm gonna pass those tickers as a list into this function, which will just subset our calendar for the date range we specified. I'm gonna extract the earnings release dates from our calendar and add the weight. So the percentage weight on the index, otherwise just return null if there are no earnings or if the symbol doesn't belong in the S&P. And then finally just return temp. So let's go ahead and minimize this and run it. We're gonna go ahead and row bind the results and we're gonna order by S&P weight. So let's take a look at that table. For the month of April, we have a total of 141 companies that are reporting that belong to the S&P. And as you see from the table, these are ordered by percentage weight. And we can use this table to make other calculations or forecast for the particular index. All right, guys, well, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link to my Patreon down in the description area where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.